In this video, we're going to cover the interface of Synchro. It may be different than anything you've used before, so there will be a small learning curve. Let's we'll start with Synchro by opening up a sample file. I have one open here. It's a Synchro training project, but anyone will work. And we're just going to have it open just so we can get some context for what we're doing and the changes that we make in the user interface. So at the top, we have the command menus, and those are typical, like file, edit, view, etc. And just below the command menus, we have toolbars. By default, Synchro will load these three toolbars for you. Now, if I right-click in an empty space in the toolbar area, I'll see which toolbars they are. They're useful commands, fast options, and performance. Now, toolbars work like they do in any other program. So if we want to turn off performance, for example, which is this one here, then all I would have to do is uncheck performance. So doing that gets rid of the toolbar, and it moves up the rest of the application. Now, I like a toolbar called Edit. That toolbar shows all the same commands as you would see in the command menu edit. So what we'll do again is right click in an empty space in the toolbar area and I'm just going to hit on edit. So we get that nice toolbar right there and if we want we can drag it by selecting these dots on the left hand side and we can have it float or we can dock it to the bottom or we can bring it back up top. Now my screen's a little bit smaller so I like to keep it on the right hand side of the fast options toolbar. Now after a while you may find that you're using some commands more often than others. For example, I like to use a tool called 3D subdivision. But I like to use a certain command and so I want it on my toolbar. The problem is if I add the Windows toolbar, I get all these other commands that I don't necessarily want or use all too often. And also I'm noticing some of these commands like this one, these two eyes here, they're, du they're duplicated in this other toolbar. So what I want to do is just take one command from this toolbar and move it to another toolbar. This is pretty easy. All you got to do again is right click in the toolbar area and click on customize. Now we don't need to do anything with this window, but just by having it open, we can move around commands as we please. So I'm going to grab the 3D subdivision icon and I'm just going to drag it over to where I want. Okay, it's where I want it, and I'm going to hit close, and now I'm also going to close my Windows toolbar. Now the rest of Synchro is made up of tabs, which you see in front of you is the main tab, and by default it has three tabs within it. There at the bottom, and our Welcome, Gantt, and Resources. The Welcome tab has some useful shortcuts to help tutorials, support, and the equipment library, but you may find yourself most often in the Gantt tab. The Gantt tab shows you your schedule in the Gantt format. You can resize your columns by adjusting the column heads, and that will make a little bit more room so that you can see the Gantt chart a little bit easier. Now, my screen is a little small, so this is one of those cases where a big screen or even multiple monitors can really help you out. But there are a few other things that we can do to make our Gantt chart a little bit more user-friendly. I'm looking at the start and finish dates and it would be nice if these were a little bit more concise and there's an option to do just that so let's go into tools and then options and let's go to general and as soon as I click on general we see the time display format we could have selected long date and that will show us the long version of that date uh, which we don't want and generally you like to keep it short but one thing I'm noticing here looking at our sample is that the months and the days are reversed. This is more of a European style um, and I like to use the American style so I'll just click on the 12 hour clock and that will switch over to months, days, years. Now there's also a checkbox to display the time of day and depending on the application that you're in you may want to use that and you may not. It's all user preference. Okay, I'm going to expand general and I'm going to go now to duration display format. And we have two options. We have verbose and concise. Verbose basically writes out days with the full word, whereas concise will just have the letter D with no space. This drop down allows us to tell Synchro how we want it to display our durations. So if we had something that was five hours, we can just click on hours and it would show hours. Or if it was five hours, we can click on days and this would show us prob probably half a day. I like to use weeks and days. And basically, if something is five days, it will say one week. If, we have, if it's four days, it will say four days. 
So this is something that you definitely want to adjust according to your needs and preferences. All right. One last thing I'm going to show you before I get out of the options dialog box is let's go to Gantt chart and click on task indentation. Now I'm just going to bring the options dialog box a little bit over to the right so you can see our list view of the Gantt chart. And what we can do is change the indentation level. So as you can see, the initial site, initial site fencing is indented uh, pretty significantly. What we can do is change that indentation level from normal to, I like to put to narrowest. And of course you can change and have your preference, but I like to keep it at narrowest and usually that's the best for conserving space. So let's hit OK. Now our task list is a little bit more narrow and we can definitely make some more room for more columns if we want or we can make our Gantt chart a little bit bigger. Also in the main tab we have the resources tab. This shows us all the resources that we can assign to task. On the left is the navigator and I'm just going to click on it to pin it so you can see it. And the navigator shows us high level information about our project and allows us to access things like filters, use profiles, and a slew of other features which we'll be covering throughout this course. On the right is the Task Properties tab. This gives us access to all the information about any selected tasks. You may also see windows for 3D objects and 3D properties. These are all important and we will cover what they do as we go through this course. I just wanted to show you how to find these windows and how to turn them on or off. So for example, if you turn off your navigator panel, you can turn it on as well as all the other panels from the Windows menu. Notice here how the icon for the navigator panel is this blue eye. Also notice that the task properties is the red eye. These two can also be turned on and off from the toolbar with those same two icons. Now if a window is on, say like the 3D objects window, and you can't seem to find it, make sure to look at the bottom of the panels as well as on the sides. The panel may be hidden behind other panels or minimized and in a collapse tab here on the side. You can always take these windows and rearrange them and put them wherever you like. For example, I like to keep the 3D objects panel behind the navigator panel. So what I'll do is grab the header and put it right here over this square icon. And that shows me my tabs for the navigator panel. It takes up a little bit less space and there is an additional action of having to switch back and forth between the windows, but I find this to be the most useful. In the next video, we'll go over some suggested settings to have before you start a project.